For the 57th problem on this first ACT practice test, the functions y is equal to sine of x and y is equal to sine of x plus a plus b for constants a and b are graphed in the standard xy coordinate plane below. The functions have the same maximum value. One of the following statements about the values of a and b is true. Which statement is it? So when dealing with the sine or the cosine function, I often refer myself to the unit circle. Now, the defining feature of this circle is that it's centered at zero and it has a radius of one, hence the name unit circle. So this radius is one and we use this circle because you can create any triangle possible within this circle given that the hypotenuse or the radius of it is one. And notice just from where I've drawn this point here along the unit circle that I can draw a triangle here by just dropping this vertical and connecting that to the origin here. So this point up here we can call x, y. And if we call this angle theta, we can think about, let's first think about this vertical side here. Now, I claim that this vertical side is simply the sine of theta. So if you recall the mnemonic SOKATOA, the sine here is simply equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. But our hypotenuse in the unit circle is always going to be 1. So the sine of theta is just equal to the opposite side, or opposite the angle. And the side opposite the angle is this y value here. So the sine of theta is equal to the y value. Now you can also make pretty much the same argument, but for the x value, and that would be the cosine of theta. So I mention all of this because now we can ask the question, what if we made the angle equal to zero? And essentially what you'd get is a triangle that's completely squished. Or it'd be a triangle with no vertical height. Let me make that a little darker so you can see it better. Now it's essentially just a straight line, but in some sense you can think of this as, as a triangle where the height of the triangle is zero. So recall that our height, this y value, is just the sine value. And since there is no height, we can say the sine value is zero when the angle is zero. So let's write that down, that if we have a table here where our angle, we can call that theta, and our function, the sine of theta, we know that when theta is zero, the sine of theta is also zero. Now let's look at another extreme. What if we had a triangle that was entirely vertical? So that would be a triangle up here. This type of triangle would have no x value. So we can ask the question, when our triangle has this angle, which is 90 degrees, or in radians, it's pi over two, when our triangle has this angle, it's all vertical. Or the vertical, the y, is simply equal to the hypotenuse, which is one. So when theta, I'll use 90 degrees for this, but like I said, it could also be thought of in radians as pi over two. But when theta is 90 degrees, the sine of theta is one. And then you can continue thinking about just these extremes that now we have this length here, where again, the sine of theta is zero since we have no height. And this is an angle of 180 degrees. So let me write that in, that at 180, the sine of theta goes back to zero. And then our last extreme measure here is just this angle here, which we can call 270 degrees. And now it's back to all height, but in the opposite direction. So now it's downwards below the x-axis, which means that this value is negative. And since the hypotenuse is still one, it would just be at negative one here. So we can say at 270 degrees that the sine is at negative one. And then when you go through 360 degrees, 
it's the same thing as zero degrees. So we start seeing everything repeat every 360 degrees. So 360 degrees, which is equal to zero degrees, we go back to a sine value of zero. So we have to look at our curve and think of which one of these lines here is just simply the sine function. And the difference between our function sine of theta and this function y is equal to sine of x is just that x and theta are switched. So x here is like our angle. It's essentially the same thing as theta on this chart. So for an x value of 0, our sine value should be 0 as well. So at 0, one of these curves should also be at 0, and that would be this curve here. So we can conclude, since that's our only choice, that this curve here, this entire curve, this is the sine of x. So we figured out that this blue curve is just our y is equal to sine of x, which means this black curve is our y is equal to sine of x plus a plus b. So now we just have to ask ourselves, what happens if we add to x inside the parentheses and what happens when we add to the sine function as a whole on the outside? So what happens when we add this b and what happens when we add this a? So let's think about the b first. If we were to add, let's say, 2 to this, then whatever our x value is that we put in here, we'll get a sine value that is always between, notice on this, it's always between 1 and negative 1 since you can see that on the unit circle. So we have this function that essentially oscillates between 1 and negative 1, and now we're just adding 2 to all the values. So each of these values would go up by 2. Or in essence, what happens is that you get a shift upwards by 2. Or if we look over here where this peak is, it was at 1 on the y-axis. Now this peak will be all the way up at 3 though this isn't drawn to scale. So in essence, adding on the outside, adding a positive value, will just shift the entire curve up by however many units we add. And if we subtract, the opposite would happen. Subtracting on the outside would shift everything down by however many units you subtract. So we know since the functions have the same maximum value, so their peaks here, this is the same value. And for that to be true, that means that the sine function, when b was added to it, wasn't shifted up at all. And if it wasn't shifted at all, then b would have to be 0. And notice there's only one choice where b is equal to 0. And that is this choice a, which is the correct answer. Though, before we finish, let's go over this constant a. Usually, when you add inside the parentheses to your independent variable, this x value, when you add it, it'll shift everything to the left. So that's for addition. And when you subtract something, it shifts everything to the right. So if you were to put the sine of x into a graphing calculator, and you also graph the sine of x minus 1, then what you'll see is that compared to this original sine function, that this curve will shift to the right because we're subtracting. So if this is our sine function, then the sine of x minus 1 would be shifted one unit to the right, so something like that. And if you added, it would be shifted to the left. And our answer here, notice, is saying that a is less than 0. And since we're adding a, that would be the case like this one here, where we're actually subtracting from x. So we should expect a shift to the right. But as you can see, we can see a shift to the left. So in all honesty, I'm not sure if I'm just misunderstanding this or if the problem's wrong. Because I've checked this with a calculator, and it should be a is greater than 0 but I might be missing something. So if anybody sees something that I don't, please let me know in the comments. But the important point in the way that you can for sure get the right answer is that B only has one value and there's only one choice for B is equal to zero. So we do know that A is right, just 
this value here is questionable.